All right. Okay, devlog number two for my new horror game, Lost and Found. I'm going to talk about animations. Um, just get better animations on our character. Just to recap, here's where we left off. We created an environment and we created our main character and we gave him some basic controls and he can walk around the scene like this with his awkward run animation. So we're going to fix up the animations. Um, let me show you what I tried to do real quick. Um, so I had this Untitled GLB is a library of animations straight from Mixamo with a Mixamo character. And the, and the Mixamo character is in a T-pose. And as you should know, if you watched my tutorial on using animations with our plugin, our characters are in an A-pose. So um, the animations are not compatible, and I will show you why. I probably have to set up a bone map for this. Um, so if I try to add these animations to our guy and I disable the animation tree so the player can play and then I choose one of the animations you'll see that the arms are all messed up right? because the T-pose is different from an A-pose due to the arm position so what I tried to do is I tried to retarget them using the T pose, rest pose, and the A pose, rest pose, and just change the rotation tracks on all of these clips. And I got kind of close, but it's still off a little bit. So I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to show you if somebody else wants to try using it. I will create a new resource, which is a copy of this with modified animations. Um, maybe somebody that's really likes doing stuff with quaternions can take a crack at solving it. I could not figure out exactly how to do it. They're kind of close, but not close enough for me. So some of the anal idle animations look okay, but you know, a lot of them look decent actually, but um, some of them are just a bit off. If we look at this running animation, you see his hand is going into his leg and his other hand is going into, so they're just going through the hips. I don't know why. Uh, it's not just this one. There are several that are like that. Most of them look good. So, you know, it may be usable in some specific circumstances, but I'm not gonna use it. So what I've done is I've just downloaded single clips from Mixamo in the way that I showed on our video. Uh, I uploaded, <clears throat> I, I created a character in MPFB I exported an FBX fam, uploaded it to Mixmo, and then chose single clips to download. Um, and I'm going to now put them in a GLB for a new animation library. So let me delete these files. Now, um, I'm going to use a plugin called Mixmo Root, which I found through FinePoint CGI who makes good old videos, maybe you've heard of him. He forked it from somebody who forked it from somebody and I forked it from him. So uh, it wasn't working when I tried to download his copy. So I've cleaned it up and got at least this top part working. I don't know what's going on down here, um, but I'll show you what it does and I'll put a link to the repository in the description. So we need to point the folder at we need to point this at the folder where the animation clips are, the FBX. And these are three options. So I do want to insert a root bone because I want to use root motion. I do want to delete all the armatures because it will create, well, for the first one I won't, so you can see what it's doing. You can remove prefix or not. I don't really care because Godot is going to do the retargeting anyway. So if I import all of these animations, this is what I have. Okay. Um, I can shorten the timeline so it loops better. So if I delete armatures, it's going to delete all but one, and then that's all I need is one. So then you can um, manage the actions. Now, 
another thing that this plugin is doing is it's renaming the actions according to the file names. So if we look, well, first I'll just go ahead and delete all of these guys and re-import it as one armature. And actually, I don't want to use all of these animations. I don't think I'm going to use some of them. So I'm going to move them to this unused folder. So first of all, I've added the dash loop prefix, or excuse me, suffix to a lot of these files that will make it that the plugin will name the action the file name, which means the action will have dash loop at the end. And when Godot imports it, it will automatically set the loop mode for these clips, which is why I did that. However, I don't think I'm going to use these backward turn left, walking turn left, walking turn right, etc. I'm going to keep the strafe, walking forward, walking back, the 180 turn, and the left and right turns, and walking backwards. Um, where's the left turn? Okay, it's here. Okay. So I think I just want to skip these guys. So I'm just going to put them in a folder so the plugin doesn't import them. So now if I import, it will all cause it. Okay. Um, so I got it to work. It didn't like the fact that I had this unused folder in the same folder with these files. I don't know. I don't feel like debugging it. This is not a plugin I intend to maintain um, for the long term. I just, I just wanted to get it working, just because I want to use root motion, um, and I didn't want to go through and rename all of the actions manually, which is pretty tedious. Um, so, speaking of root motion. You see the root bone is at the bottom now, and what it's done is it's moved the um, X and Z uh, location track of the hips onto this root bone. So the hips only move in the Y direction now, and we assume that the root's going to move with the hips. It did not transfer any of the rotations of the hips onto the root bone. So in Godot, we are going to use, or I'm going to use, um, root motion only for the position, just to keep the feet from skating when he's walking. Any rotation movement is not going to use root motion. It's a whole other can of worms uh, when you talk about transferring hip rotation onto the root bone, and I just don't want to do it. I find Blender scripting to be pretty cumbersome and hard to understand, so this is good enough for me. Okay, um, so let's look at the actions real quick. Uh, actually, we don't even have to do that. Let's just go ahead and d let's delete this mesh because we only need the skeleton just in the name of space. And then let's just export this as a GLB into Godot. And I guess I'll put it in the characters folder and I'll make a new folder called animation. And I'll put it in here and we'll call it locomotion. I could save the blend file also, you know what? I think I'll do that because I may, I'm gonna to wanna to edit it later, so I'll just save the blend file. Usually I export GLB and, and save the blend fire, file elsewhere, but I'll just save it in the project. Okay, we'll call it locomotion. Okay. So that's all we need from Blender for now. The advantage of using root motion is you don't have to try to match your character's speed with the animation clip so that the feet stay still on the floor. It's automatically handled for you. Um, so let's go ahead and set the import settings for this. We want to import it as an animation library, not a scene. 
and we want to use bone mappings so that we could use the retarget rig. Okay, so here's our character Frank, but we actually need to fix some things on Frank, so I'm going to pull him back into the authoring scene by loading his resource on the humanizer node. Let's see if we have any luck with quick load. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so this time it's going to find it. And I can delete this other folder that I was testing. Sometimes it doesn't find the, the resources when you do quick load and you have to load and do the path manually. I don't know what the deal is. Um, with the CODs, it was causing so many editor errors due to me using timers on the scene tree. And if you just switch tabs like this, it freaks out. So I switched the CODs to be disabled by default. You can enable it. Um, it will enable at runtime automatically and ready, but not in the editor. So for example, if I enable it and then switch tabs, errors pop up. It's really annoying. So I'm just going to keep it disabled. But I do want to fix this error real quick on line 12. Um, okay, so if you disable it, okay, so if, if, this is ugly, but I'll just do a null check. Um, so what we need to do is we need to add a root bone to Frank because I use the default rig, but the default rig does not have a root bone. So we're going to add the root motion component because we want to use root motion. And while we're here, we might as well fix his hat and hair issue. So we've added the ability to uh, use the transform on the sub meshes here and they will get baked that way. We haven't yet added the deserialization for that, so when you load him again, it will be back to the default, but we will add that. So let me just slide his hat up a tad. That's good enough for now. Okay, and then I'm just going to bake him again. And save him again. I've also um, modified... Oh, 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 oh. I fixed the bug with... Um, the save path not working when you change it, and I need to change this back to what it was. Okay. There may be another bug. I think it's not creating the folder now because it should have created the folder. Let me fix that real quick. Um, Um, but it's actually good that it didn't make the dirt because I was just going to delete it anyway. So let's do this again. Can I see more null checking here? Um, the skeleton should not be null, I think.
Okay. So now we have saved Frank again. He's got a root bone, so we can use root motion. So let's set up his animations. He does not have a root bone. Sometimes you have to close the scene and reload it. Or sometimes you even have to delete files. Okay, let me close this and then save with the scene closed. I don't know. It's good as finicky with resources sometimes. And he still doesn't have a root bone. Come on. Okay, I know why. Uh, it's because I'm no longer overwriting the scene file. Um, because I don't want people to lose work if they're editing their humans. Unfortunately, the skeleton is stored in the scene file. It's basically one of the only things in the scene that's not stored in its own resource. So I'm going to have to actually save the scene file again. So what I'm going to do is just rename it Frank V2 and just use this as a temporary scene. I don't want to lose this scene because I've set up some of the stuff so I'll just copy the skeleton from here to here. So I'm going to delete this. This one has the root bone so I'll copy it. I'll paste. Usually you won't have to do this but um, if you do change the skeleton, you'll run into issues. Um, I need to set the skeleton here. And I don't think I need this scene anymore. Okay, there we go. It's still pointing to the wrong folder from earlier. Um, I think I do need to remake the scene. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to copy this to Frank 2 and use Frank V2. There we go. You're done. Don't save. Okay, I kind of screwed that up, but it's fine. So we'll just delete Frank version 1. It's a bit awkward, but uh, okay. So, um, I don't want to use this default scene, so I'm going to make this local. And I'm going to change the root node to be a blend space 2D. Because, um, sorry, not blend space 2D, a blend tree. Because I want to have a state machine, but I want to blend it with other things. So we'll create a locomotion state machine. And we need to set the root motion track is not assigned. So let's set that to the root bone and the animation tree. And let's change the advanced expression base node to Frank. That is where our script is that has these variables like moving, which will control the state in the state machine. And now we can add some animations. So for now I'll just put idle as a single animation. This is from uh, the default animation tree. And then I'll make a blend space for moving. Call this idle and I'll call this um, uh, movement. And when we enter the state machine, we want to go to the idle state. And then when we start moving, we want to go to the movement state. And the condition to advance is going to be the Boolean moving. So you can put any Boolean in here. You can even put, you know, less than equals, stuff like that. But this is a bool already, so. Okay. 
Now let's go in here. Let's add some clips. So we want to walk. Oh, I need to add the animation library, which I have imported. Excuse me. Okay. Now, now we can add the clips in here. So let's add walking when we push up. So basically we're going to feed the input, either WASD or left joystick, it's going to be mapped here. So up will be walking forward. Actually, it's not going to be the input because uh, I am going to let the character move independently of the camera. So I'll show you that in a minute, but it's going to be related to the input. Um, here we'll do the left turn. Here we'll do the right turn. So we're not strafing because this movement blend space will just be... Um, we'll let the character move independently of the camera. When we have like an aiming blend space, then we will strafe. Uh, where's the walking turn 180? Okay, there's two of them. I need to go back in to Blender and fix that, but I'm not going to do it right now. It has some duplicate clips. Okay, um, let's test this out. So, let's set this to active. Let's go into our state machine. And let's play the movement clip. And we should be able to see the animations going, but we cannot for some reason. Um, I wonder if it's related to this expression here. Let's just try true. Nope. Um, so idle works. Uh, Yep. Okay, we forgot to remap the bones, apparently. It's still the mix mode names. So I need to open the import settings for this. You see the dupl duplicate clips here, which I'll fix later. Change the bone map. And make it humanoid. It should map successfully on everything and just re-imports. Okay. Let's try again. And there we go. Okay, so he's doing something. All right, so um, if we send it up, he moves forward. If we send it back, he's going to turn around. This one is not a loop. It's just a single animation clip, and it's kind of hard to see. Just watch his feet. So here's his left turn. Here's his right turn. I'm curious how this will blend with walking forward. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, because the, the, I think the right turn is uh, right foot first and then left, and the walking is left foot first, so I was worried that they would not blend well, but it looks like Godot handles it pretty well. I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay. Okay, so let's change the logic in his script then. Why can I not shrink this. Uh, 
Okay, so what script do we have on here? We should have... Oh, uh, we still have the default script. Oh, crap. I think I deleted the script that I wrote last time, but that's okay. It wasn't too complicated, and we need to change it anyway. So let's set up some um, references. So let's get the animation tree. Let's get his ad avatar. I need the var keyword. And his avatar is a mesh instance 3D. Um, oh, one other thing I want to change. Okay, so his spring arm. So the way this works is it wants to get to the end here. And if it bumps into things, it can be pushed back. So what we want is for the spring arm to actually point the opposite way. Because we want it here. And then if he gets close to a wall, it pushes the camera forward instead of flipping through the wall. So let's fix that. But we also want a pivot point because, well, I'll show you. Okay, so let's change the spring arm to a minus one length. And then we can maybe move it forward a little bit. Now, <coughs> if I rotate this, Frank goes out of out of frame, which is not what I want. So what I'm going to want to do is add a node in between that sits at the origin. And we'll call it camera pivot. And the spring arm will be a child of that. So now I can rotate the camera pivot and Frank will stay in frame. And, and one more thing, I want to add an area 3D so that it will collide. I think I need area 3D. And then it needs a collision shape. And we will just give it a sphere. And let's make it a bit smaller. Maybe 0.1. Okay. That will be our camera that can bump into things so it doesn't clip through. Let's make it a little bit bigger. 0.2. Okay. So let's get references to some of these things too. So the camera pivot. And I'm going to change this exported camera to just reference the node by name. So we don't have to connect it every time. And that's a phantom camera 3D. Okay, and here we want the spring arm. We're not going to need the move speed because root motion is going to set that for us. We don't need this vertical impulse. That was just me playing around with ragdolls. We need gravity still, and we need the skeleton still. I'm going to move them up here. I have all my already stuff together. Okay. Um... Yeah, to accept to okay, so I, I'm here manually setting the advanced expression base node to this node. Uh, it takes its path, and I had to deactivate and reactivate the animator. We don't have a ragdoll, so we don't need this or this. Um, camera should never be null. Okay, so we get our camera vectors. And that will handle the input direction. So the input is going to be projected onto those vectors. 
But I actually don't want to rotate this script. What I want to rotate is the avatar. I don't need this line anymore. And this is all ragdoll stuff. Okay. So let's load up the game and see how it looks. Um, where did I put my scene? Main game. And I have a new Frank, so... Of course it's corrupt. Maybe I can fix the dependencies. Okay. So we'll point this at our new Frank scene. Okay. Now let's fire it up and see how it looks. Okay, um... These need to be changed. Because I want to use the WASD keys, W-A-S-D. So let's go ahead and set these settings. Okay, I have them set. ADWS. I just need to remap them here. So I'll use the search and replace and replace UI underscore with move underscore. But it's not called move down, it's called move back. And it's not called move up, it's called move forward. Okay, and actually I need to do mouse movement also for looking around. So let's do that. And input and if event is input mouse motion, we are going to store two angles, the pitch and the yaw. And the yaw will be the Um, where is my camera pivot? Let's delete this. I think that's still referencing the old scene. So the yaw will be the camera pivot rotating around Y. So, um... Actually, I don't think, do I even need this? I don't think I even need these. Oh, I'll come back and delete them if I don't need them. Um, so we want to do camera pivot dot rotate y event dot relative dot x. So when we move the mouse in the x direction, it will rotate around the vertical y axis of the camera pivot. And we want to set the pitch equal to, I'm going to set it in a variable because I want to clamp the pitch. So this will be um, I guess we want plus equals. I, maybe, I, I don't think I need to store the yaw, I think I need to store the pitch. Um, this will be the spring arm. No, sorry. Event dot relative dot y, and then we need to clamp it. Pitch uh, clamp f pitch, and I think these angles are in radians. So is there a red to degree? Yes, or no? We want degree to red, and let's say minus eighty. 280. And let's just set the spring arm dot rotation dot x to the pitch. Let's see if that works.
Okay, it's way too sensitive. It does look like it works though. So let's put some sensitivity in. For now, I'm just going to put it in the script. Probably later, I'll move it to some settings class somewhere. Um, I don't think I need this. Just the pitch. Actually, I don't really think I really need the pitch either because I can just get the... Um, spring arm dot rotation dot x. Okay, um, sensitivity. Zero dot oh oh one to zero dot oh one bar mouse sensitivity equals something like this, some small number. Um, let's multiply these event parameters and let's try it again. Okay, that's not bad. And it does look <clears throat> to be appropriately clamped. Uh, for some reason, I can look up more than I can look, or I can look down more than I can look up. So something's off with some transform somewhere. Also, the X is reversed, so let's fix that. Uh, so the pitch should be minus, I think, here. Nope. It's not the pitch, it's the yo. Minus here. There we go. Okay, so let's find the transform that's off. Um, no rotation. So this one rotates uh, around X. Let's go ahead and set it to zero. Okay, let's try again. Oh, I think I need to set the global rotation, not the rotation. Wrong scene. Um, That should do it. Okay, and this needs to be avatar dot basis dot looking at. Okay. Now he's at least trying to move. Um, we need to transition back out of the movement state when he's not moving. We need to load it in the Frank scene. So from here, back to idle, and the condition will be not moving. Um, just try to increase his speed and see if he actually will move. I don't know what this means. Some random errors sometimes. 
Okay, so he's not moving at all, which I guess is maybe because I have root motion set. I, th I thought you could still set the velocity. Also, looks like he's playing the wrong animation. So. Why is that? <coughs> oh, he's not moving because maybe I'm not calling move and slide. Um... Oh, we need to set the parameter. So the animator dot set, I think you can access it with brackets too. Parameters slash locomotion slash uh, movement slash blend position. I think these can be lowercase, not 100% sure, equals movement. So I probably don't need this. What did I call it? Anim? Okay, it needs to be a vector 2, not a vector 3. So we'll use x and z. Uh, might need to be minus z, we'll figure it out. I think it is. Okay, I had called it uh, movement with a lowercase m, so it is case sensitive apparently. The state machine is with a capital L, but the blend space inside is Lowercase m. <coughs> so let's see how it looks now. Oh, we fell to the floor. Or we may be near the edge. Um, Frank, is that you way over there? Let's move him closer. There's the center. The center's here. Okay. Okay, so the Y is backwards. X is backwards, too. I got them both wrong. Um, but we can fix that. Am I overriding the human controller? I think I am. It's okay, I'm going to save this as a different file. Yeah, I, I don't want to overwrite that. Um, I guess I'll put it here next to Frank for now. Call it player. I guess player.gd. Okay, so... We need minus movement dot x plus movement dot z. Okay, so I can make him turn by holding left and right, but that's not exactly what I want. I can make him walk forward. Um, but what I want him to do is walk relative to the camera. So let's fix this somehow. Um, in fact, it seems like this isn't working either.
see if it's rotating at all. Okay, it is rotating. All right. Um, so I think what I want to do is take our movement factor and project it onto the direction the avatar is facing. And that's what should go into the state machine. So let's say, uh, what do we call it? Um, move direction, I guess. There's going to be a vector 2. And the y is going to be movement. I don't like the names, but we can fix it later. Uh, movement dotted with avatar dot basis dot z probably with a minus sign and then the x1 will be dotted with avatar dot basis dot x and then that's what we will feed here Okay, so the y is backwards again. I'm going to guess the x is too, because my intuition is always wrong. Okay, cool. So now I can hold um, d, and he'll continue to the right. Um, but since that's the way his avatar is facing, he will stay in that state. Now, as I move the camera, it should change, though. So something still needs to be fixed. And I may have to slow down these... the... the um, the rotation, because it seems like he's just instantly yeah, he's just instantly doing this. So we, we actually want to slurp here. Um, we want to slurp into a basis that is looking in that direction. We won't we don't just want to move that way immediately. So let's try that and see if the turning animations get played. Okay, that's better. It still happens kind of fast, and it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell if the other animations are getting played. I can slow it down even more. Okay, so if I... Okay, it is. It's playing the turn animation. And it's turning so slow that it's taking him a while for the avatar to actually face that direction. So we'll have to play with this a little bit. That's not bad. I don't like that transition. Yeah, the there's an abrupt transition from from uh, the the 180 turn to the normal walking state. Hmm. I may remove that from the state machine. Okay, so now we can set up root motion. So. Okay, um, so I think we need to do 
we need to get the um, change in the position, which is going to be, uh, they usually call it delta in physics, and now time is delta, so let's call it um, displacement. And that's going to be on the animator.get root anim dot get root motion position. We probably need to rotate this by our local rotation. Uh, so that's going to be basis dot get the quaternion times. I even think just basis times that should work. And then the velocity, we'll keep the gravity addition, but we want to replace this with our root motion displacement over time. So velocity is displacement over time, which is delta. And let's see if we can move like this. Okay, not bad. And look, his feet are matched up pretty well to the ground underneath. Um, and the rotation is wrong. So he's still walking forward, even though he should be walking left. And that is because I rotated it by our um, root node. And what I really need to do is rotate it by the avatar. So... Let's change that to avatar.basis. And there we go. All right. So I would say we still need a little bit of work to smooth out these animations, um, especially the transitions between them. But I think it's not bad. Uh, the main issue is when you turn around and then you get that jump. I don't know why you get that weird jump. It could be that he's just not turning around fast enough. Let's see, let's increase this back to 0.1. It's actually better. Yeah, so I guess he just wasn't turning around fast enough to keep up with the rotation. Okay, not bad. Uh, I'm going to call it a day now. So we fixed our guy. We got the root bone on his skeleton. We uh, set up a new animator that lets us walk independently of the camera. We set up camera movement with the mouse. I need to capture the mouse. Um the mouse mode I need to set, so let's do that real quick. And put dot mouse mode equals captured, so that way the um, pointer doesn't escape. Pretty good. All right. Oh. Why is he not walking? Or he's not turning. What did I do? Um, so the movement is relative to the camera. So the avatar should be looking in the direction relative to the camera. Am right. Okay, that looks correct. If I press up, he's always moving the same direction. Oh, silly me. I know exactly what it is. This needs to be the global basis. Now it should work. 
I'm going to check for all my references to the basis everywhere. Okay, there we go. Now it looks much more smooth, actually. Okay, great. So that's going to be it for today. Um, making good progress. He's looking much more smoothly animated than having his goofy run. Um, I do need to add a run, though. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks a lot to everybody who donated on the Patreon. We really appreciate it. And have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.